Welcome to a new episode of Library of the Week. Today we will be talking about Plotlink, a very popular library for data visualization with Python. This is part of a medium series I do about Python libraries. It's called Libraries of the Week and I try to do them weekly. In the description of the video you can find a link to the article I wrote about Plotly. Plotly is a library that is at the same time user-friendly and offers a lot of personalization options for your chart. It's also a good tool to use if you want interactive charts where the user can move them around, zoom in and out and so on. Plotly is an open source and free project and it has two main sub libraries if we can say one is plotly express and then you have the plotly graph objects library and this one gives you way more flexibility so it is good if you need more personalization the problem with this is that it is harder to use and then there is dash dash is also part of plotly but it's a separate library so you should keep installing with dash we are not going to cover Dash in this video. I will probably do a video for Dash totally separated since it's a separated library. Dash is a framework that uses Plotly and allows you to create complete dashboard apps. So I just mentioned it because you might see it out there. It's part of the Plotly project, but I won't be covering it in this video. Plotly is a very well documented project. You can check the documentation page and as you can see, you have tons of different charts, maps, scientific charts, 3D charts. You can organize your plot into subplots to show trends or evolutions. It interacts with Jupyter notebooks. You can create animations. There is really tons of things that we can do with Plotly. We're going to see a few in this video, but obviously we we cannot cover all of this, right? As I said earlier, this is an open source project, but there is a company behind this project called Prodly Technologies Inc. and they offer the library for free, but they also offer some premium services for companies. The services they offer are more related to enterprise support, CI CD integration, and things like that. As a community, you can see there is a forum that is full of information. Plotly comes for several languages, and here we have Plotly Python. And you can find lots of questions by users. You can ask users if you want. So this is a very active community. I suggest that you try to look for information here. If not, you also have Stack Overflow. There is almost 14,000 questions here, so it's a very big source of information. Now let's talk a bit about the advantages and disadvantages of using Plotly. The main advantages are that it's easy to use for beginners, but also very complete and you can create very, very personalized charts and visuals. Obviously that comes with more complexity, but you can choose between both approaches and you can combine them too, so that's great. And if you need interaction in your charts, if you need the user to be able to zoom out, to zoom in, to turn your chart around, that's something you can do with Plotly, so that's a great advantage. In the disadvantage side, all what I just said can be a disadvantage, so all the flexibility that Plotly provides can lead to more complexity, especially if you are using graphing objects, and the fact that the Plotly charts are in interactive. What it means is that there is JavaScript behind them, JavaScript code, and it can make your visuals in some cases kind of heavy and hard to run. And so what are some alternatives? A first alternative would be Matplotlib. So this is a library that offers less interactivity potential. It is a very, very well-known library. I have done a libraries of the week uh, about Matplotlib before. So very reliable project for charts that are not interactive. By the way, if you want to check all the libraries of the week, you have them all in my Medium account. Seaborn is another popular library. It is based on Matplotlib, but it extends its capabilities and it's more scientific oriented. So if you need scientific publications or if you need to do things like papers, probably Seaborn is more adapted. Vega Altair is also a great choice. This is a declarative library, so the way you create the charts is a bit different in the type of syntax that you're going to use. 
and last but not least, Bokeh. This alternative is the one that is most, more similar to Plotly because it allows to create interactive charts as well. Let's now check some basic statistics. As of September the 15th of 2023, we are in version 5.17. Plotly has been downloaded over 11 million times in the last 30 days on PIPY and it has over 600,000 downloads on Conda. Its first release is from June of 2013 and it, its latest release is from today, September the 15th of 2023. So as you can see, this is a well-maintained project. It has has two dependencies and on github it has 14,000 stars, 2,000, over 2,000 forks, 279 watchers and 223 contributors. It also has a source rank of 16 in libraries.io. Now we're going to see some examples on how to use Plotly. Let's start with an easy one. The first thing we need to do is import the library. In this case, we're going to import Plotly Express. This is the sub-library that allows us to do quick visualizations. And so this is a visualization library. The first thing we need is data. Plotly comes with some mock data. In this case, it is the Iris dataset that is very famous and that I used in my Plotly demo. So you can import it doing px.data.iris and it will create a pandas data frame. So to create a chart, in this case we're going to create a scatter chart. We use for that the function px.scatter and as parameters I'm going to give first of all the data source, so it's my data frame, my x and y values. In this case my x will be the sepal width. So you see I just provide the name of the column. I don't need to do df sepal width like I would in a pandas way. In y I give sepal length, so I am comparing the sepal width versus the sepal length. The color I give the species, so this is a optional argument and it will break my data by colors and I provide a title. This will appear in the top of my chart and I also add this figure dot or fig dot update x axis and y axis and I define range equal zero so this is the lower range and round this is because i want a an integer number and i get the maximum value for the sepal width and they do the same but for the sepal length in the y axis plus i add one to each one and you'll see what this does is set the origin of my chart at zero and here is our plot so you see here the origin is at zero and now let's see some more complex examples. We're going to continue still with Plotly Express. And in this case, I'm still going to use the same dataset. I'm going to create a box plot. As you can see, it's very similar. Instead of px.scatter, as I did before, I use px.box. I just need to pass a few different parameters. The notched equal true, it, add the, it adds notches to the box plots. You're going to see what that is in a second. And I also add the label in the dictionary. In this case, I also use the fig.update traces. This is used to add customization to your chart. The traces are the dots that represent the data in your chart. So here we have the result. And as you can see, it is pretty cool that Plotly will display the values that you are looking at. So here I have my maximum and minimum values, the median and the other quartiles. And just so you see this update traces what it does, see this dot here in the Virginica, this outlier. If instead of putting size equal seven, I put size equal one, you barely can see it. So this is why I, I can also put 10 and it will be bigger, right? But I think, five, seven is, is good in this case. Okay, now still in the complex examples, I want to use Plotly graph objects. And what I'm going to do is create this same chart here, but instead of using Plotly Express, I'm going to use Plotly graph objects. I think since this is a demo, it can be good to create the same thing in the two different ways so you see the differences. Here is the code. So this part is equivalent to this part in Plotly Express. 
So you see why we tend to use Plotly Express unless we need more personalization and we use Plotly Graph Objects. It's pretty nice to have both options, right? So to use Plotly Graph Objects, you have to import it too. So this is the other sub-library, if we may say. You create a figure just like you would with Plotly Express, but you use Geo because we imported it as Geo. Then I do this for loop. So I iterate over the different species of my data frame. There is three different species, Setosa, Versicolor and Virginica. And at each step of the loop, I create another pandas data frame called DF species, where I only keep that species, so the, the lines of that species. And with the add trace function, I create my scatter chart. So I'm creating like three scatter charts over each other, but all of them will have the same X and the same Y values and the same type of markers. And once I have done this, I can use the update layout function where I can add add elements like the title, the title of the axis, x and y axis, and I can decide if I want to show or not show the letter. In my case, I do. This part is exactly the same as in Plotly Express though. This is to set the default origin at zero, and I use fig.show, so this is to show the chart just like just like you would with Plotly Express. And PIM, you see we have exactly the same chart. This is way longer. Obviously, to make a chart like this, you shouldn't be using Plotly graph objects. But if you need more personalization, it is a tool you can you can use. So it's good to know. The next example I'm going to show you, and this is going to be very quick because I like seeing 3D charts, but they're almost never useful. So I did not work this example very much. I'm still using the Iris dataset. So to create a 3D chart, you need to use Plotly Express and use the scatter 3D function. And then the parameters you pass to this figure are very similar to the ones you pass to a 3D chart. But since there is three dimensions, you also need to pass a Z argument. So in this case, I will also be adding the petal length to our chart. You can also use the update layout to add your titles. And fig.show is always required to show your chart. And here we have it, a 3D chart with all our data in it. And let's see the last example. And this is another one that I really like, but this one is something actually useful. We're going to create a map with Plotly because Plotly allows to create maps. First of all, we need a new data set because the Iris data set doesn't have geographic information. But we're lucky because Plotly also comes with demonstration data that is geographical data. In fact, I'm going to do this like this. So we can create a new data frame and we're going to use the gapminder data from Plotly. Again, this is a very famous data set. For each country, we have data for several years. It includes life expectancy, population, GDP per capita. What we're going to do is a map of the population of each country. And since we have several years, I'm going to do the population in the year 2007. Because if I don't select a certain year, it's going to add all the population for all the countries. So we will have the population in the year 2007. And here I took a sample of different countries. And now let's create our chart. So we're using Plotly Express again and in this case it's the scatter geo function. As usual we pass the data frame so it's our DF2007 and maps have very different parameters that you need to pass. As they say spatial is special so we need to pass the locations. In this case is ISO alpha. These are country codes and Plotly is able to interpret these country codes and assign geographically. You will see that in a second. Color is continent, so each dot in our scattered geographic scatter plot will be in a different color depending on the continent they are in. Hover name is the country, so when we hover over our plots, it will display the country. The dots will have a differential size depending on their population. The projection we're going to use is Natural Earth. There is several projections that we can use. There is the Mercator one, uh, the orthographic projection that allows us to create 3D earth maps and a title. And as usual, we use the fig.show to show the map. 
and here we have it we can zoom in so you see america is in this kind of purple color africa is in this green color europe is colored in this kind of red orange asia is blue and australia and the o oceanian continent is yellow here just to show you i could have changed this projection and it was orthographic and see we have a round earth that we can turn around so that will be it for today like this video if you liked it consider subscribing to this channel and click on the notification bell if you have any libraries that you would like me to talk about please leave a comment below and until next time